YouTube is full of videos on creating tic-tac-toe AIs using Minimax. It's a simple project you can do in one sitting, and it's not surprising that it's so appealing. But when you think about it, you realize that Minimax has substantially more potential, and so it's also appealing to create an AI for a game that's slightly larger and a bit more sophisticated. At first glance, this just looks like a slightly more decorative 9x9 tic-tac-toe board. But no, this is an ultimate tic-tac-toe board. Nine smaller local boards arranged in a 3x3 square called the global board. It feels meta, and that's because it is. You play on the local boards, which just obey normal tic-tac-toe rules, and when you win a local board, that board is now yours within the global board. So to take a turn on the global board means winning a local board. And the global board also obeys normal tic-tac-toe rules, so if you win three boards in a row, you win the game. Seems quite trivial, but there's a catch. Moves send players to the relative location of the move. So, for example, if I play in this left-middle square, the other player must play in the left-middle board. And if now they play in the top-right square, I must play in the top-right board and so on. Two additional rules. The first player may play in any of the squares. The move sending only applies after that. Well, unless you have been sent to play in a one board. In this case, if my opponent plays in the bottom left square, well, the bottom left board is one, and so I actually get to play on any free board. This obviously applies to any move that forces you to play in a board that has been won. So, say you have a two-player game, and you want to make an unbeatable AI for it. The advantage a computer has is the fact that it can evaluate tens of thousands of positions in the blink of an eye, so that's something we want to utilize. How? Well, say we take the current position of the game, and then we ask, okay, what moves can the AI play now? and we just play them all and create these branches of paths that the game can take. Okay, well now it's the player's turn, so we branch out with the moves that the player can make, and so on, until the game is over. Now what we do is we look at these final positions. If the AI has won, we give the position a value of 1. If the player wins, we give it a value of negative 1. And if it's a tie, we give it a value of 0. Then we backtrack up the tree. And this is where the name Minimax comes from. See, Minimax assumes that each player plays optimally. So, for example here, it's the AI's turn, and it wants to pick the position that leads to the maximum evaluation, since that's victory. And here it's the player's turn, and the player wants to pick the move with the minimum evaluation, since that's victory for it. So going up the tree, we interchange between the player picking the minimum of the following moves and the AI picking the maximum, all the way until the AI can pick which of these branches leads to the best final position, and from that it can pick which move on the board leads to the highest evaluation. Uh, this is really oversimplified. If you want to know more, Sebastian Lake has a really good video on the topic which I will link. Now, for the purposes of tic-tac-toe, which only has about 250,000 possible positions, we can actually create a tree with all the possible positions that the game can take. So we can enter an empty board into Minimax, and for all the moves that the AI does, we can see the player's responses and then the AI's responses to that, and so on until the game is decided. Because frankly, 250,000 positions isn't too much. And also, you have to take into account that as moves are played, the tree gets smaller at a substantial rate, meaning that by move 5, the AI is already only evaluating a few hundred positions. However, ultimate tic-tac-toe is much more complicated. If we assume that you can make around 5 moves on an average turn, and that a game lasts, say, 45 turns, we figure out that the game has a very rough 3 times 10 to the 30th positions, which is far too many to just evaluate. Instead, we only use Minimax to a certain depth. 
So instead of solving the game to completion, we cut the tree at, say, depth 5, meaning that it only branches out 5 times. Now there's an issue though. The game is likely not going to be won or lost within these 5 moves, so we can't just assign 1 to a winning position and negative 1 to a losing one. We need to create some intricate evaluation system that can judge these positions and figure out, with a good degree of precision, whether it's winning for the player or for the AI. So, to be honest, at first I kinda wanted to skip this step entirely. I would take all the squares that the AI can play on and assign them an initial value of 0. Then the AI would literally run normal one board minimax on the board that it was supposed to play on, and add the values that minimax returned for each branch to the specific square which would lead to that value. If a square is given a value of 1, it leads down a branch where the AI wins, and if it's given a value of negative 1, it will likely lead to the AI losing. So basically just normal minimax. Because, you know, solid tic-tac-toe moves are probably also solid ultimate tic-tac-toe moves. Nah? Uh, then I would do this fancy thing and I would actually run the minimax on the global board, seeing which board the AI wants to win, and it would subtract the absolute value of each board from the relative square. Why? Well, if a square on the main board is assigned a value of 1, that means the AI wants to play in it to win it. But, so if we played in the square relative to that board, it would allow the player to play on that board on their next move, which is what we don't want. But we also don't want the player to play on a square that would lead to them winning, which is why we also want to decrease the evaluation of squares that are evaluated negative 1, aka winning for the player. That's why we subtract the absolute value. Basically, we're making sure that the player can't play anywhere useful. Not in the current board, but also not on the global board. Now, while this all sounds quite smart, it was actually absolutely terrible and didn't work at all. Which, to be honest, is not surprising. So let me just get right into attempt 2, where I actually utilize minimax. Okay, so we need some way to evaluate a position in ultimate tic-tac-toe. First, let's simplify. What if we just created a function that can evaluate how good a move is for normal tic-tac-toe? This isn't too complicated, just to give a move a decent score if it creates a 2 in a row, an even better score if it creates a 3 in a row, some score for playing positionally, so a slight bias towards playing in the center, and most importantly, so that the AI doesn't instantly lose, give a move a decently high score if it blocks an opponent's 2 in a row. Using these rules, we can create an AI that actually plays normal tic-tac-toe really well. We just evaluate each square on the board using these rules and pick the square with the highest value. Like, come on, this is so much simpler than Minimax and yet just as good. And here's a simulation of it. So this is also something that we can use instead of running Minimax on the current board. That's how simple tic-tac-toe is. But the important thing is that we now have a numerical evaluation of a position, right? Because if we take the sum of all of these values, we can for example determine that this position is better than this one. So that's great, because now we can do the evaluation thing I talked about. So back in Ultimate Tic-Tac-Toe, we create a minimax tree going to a depth of, say, 5, and then we evaluate these ending positions by just taking the sum of the evaluation of all of the empty squares on all of the boards. And this should work, no? Well, it kept losing, so I assume that I messed up somewhere. The reason why it doesn't work is kind of simple, even though I didn't really realize it during coding. Notice how weird the AI acts. It's letting me create pairs, and yet Despite this position being completely losing for it, it says it's winning. Why? Well, that function I made, it's not a symmetrical evaluation. It's just something that tells the AI which square it should play on. Taking the sum of all of these squares just creates a 
semi-random number which has nothing to do with how good each player is actually doing. For example, the sum of evaluations of squares on this board is actually higher than the sum for this board, even though the right one is obviously winning for the AI. But it's because in the left one, each empty square is evaluated quite high, since playing on it would block an opponent's two in a row, and as I noted, that is quite an important move, which is why it gets evaluated so high. Nonetheless, I had to make a symmetrical evaluation function, which is what I did. So this time, it actually takes in a whole board, not just an individual move, and the player having two in a row is evaluated as good for the player, so negative. The AI having two in a row is evaluated as good for the AI, so positive. And these are to the same magnitude, so if you take this position and just reverse it, you get the same evaluation just in the negatives. And a value is also assigned to three in a rows, blocked two in a rows, and even the positional play. So center squares are given a very slight advantage, which by the way, this is actually so that the AI doesn't fall for any traps, which you can usually evade if you play in the center. But unlike the last function, the values here are symmetrical. So now to evaluate a position, you can actually just add up the evaluation of all the individual boards, plus some benefits for winning boards and for winning the game. With all of this in mind, I made the AI look 5 moves ahead and evaluate all the outcome positions using this function. And suddenly, something in the AI's behavior changed. When I was playing it, it actually seemed to kind of understand the game, although it was still a very young and dumb child when it actually came to playing it. It lost like every game. But with small adjustments and bug fixes, I watched it grow up until one day I sat down for a casual game, and I didn't really pay attention until at one point I looked up at the grid of shapes only to realize I was one move from losing. Now, I am not the best ultimate tic-tac-toe player, so at this point, I put my AI up against some random AI on the internet, because that's probably better at objectively judging how good mine is. And, well, mine lost. Which was a good thing, because it encouraged me to slightly rewrite certain things. And this in turn actually allowed me to do something really cool. So originally, if the AI was supposed to choose a board, so it was either move one or the player forced it to play in a one board, it had to choose the board independently using a different evaluation function, and then it used Minimax to pick which move on that board was the best. This was absolutely stupid, because sometimes a board is better, but playing on it makes you lose. But after performance upgrades, I just made it play Minimax on all the empty squares on the board, as opposed to choosing the board and then only doing minimax on a maximum of 9 squares, which takes a bit more time, but is much better at winning. Eventually, thanks in part to this, the AIs tied. And then, just for the fun of it, I bumped the search depth up to 8 moves, and my AI won. I literally just left online class when that happened because it was so amazing. Like, it won against the supposedly impossible level. Now for the purposes of performance, I nerfed the search depth down to 6 in the released version, which is on itch.io, so if you want to play against it, you can. It can still take a while to pick moves, so keep that in mind, but it's not like 30 seconds. And I really recommend, if you're a programmer, that you try making something like this yourself. It's a lot of fun to see your creation beat you. And if you like these kinds of random projects, I have a bunch more on my channel, so you can watch them if you want. But uh, for now, see you next time.